Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is a CZ512 semi-automatic 2-2 rimfire. Now, five years ago, I had one of these in 2-2LR to do a review for a magazine. But five years on from that, video guy that I am now, they've sent me another one. But this one is a 2-2 WMR. Now, normally, when I get the wrong rifle or something different to what I was expecting and I haven't got any ammunition, I think, oh no. But I actually have an armory full of 2-2 WMR ammunition, thanks to Aguila. So, let's get reviewing. So we've been out, we've used the CZ512. This has been a very fun rifle. Um, it's only the second semi-automatic 2.2 WMR I've ever had. The last one I had was funnily enough just a few months ago and it was an AR-15 based one. And I have to say that one, you got a lot of reciprocating noise from the spring, sort of rattling down the buffer tube. You don't get that with the CZ. Now, of course, that gun was based on the AR-15 design, 2.23 capable. This one is totally based around rimfire cartridges and it's available in 2.2 rimfire and 2.2 WMR. The 2.2 WMR comes with its 10 round magazine, the 2.2 LR comes with a 25 round magazine. Otherwise, they're almost indistinguishable. Now, the magazines are common to the CZ family, so that's the 17 HMR 2.2 WMR magazine style. The sort of the 2.2 caliber one is obviously the smaller one, it's slightly shorter back to front, and it's available in 10 or 25 round capacity. You need to have five rounders as well, and it's even compatible with the older steel magazines too, which are about double the price, but very, very durable. Not that the fiber reinforced polymer ones aren't durable. I've never broken one or worn one out, and I use a lot of CZ rifles. Let's just pop that in back in there. There is a slight fumble issue when you're putting the magazine in, but of course, if it's your rifle, you will get used to it quite quickly, but it's because it's quite a sort of slim magazine, well designed. And when you're sort of approaching it from the underside, you do sometimes just get a slight fumble on it, but that's more user error than the actual problem with the gun, because once it goes in, it goes in fine. And you can see we've got the excellent magazine release lever there, so it comes out easily. Looking at the rifle overall, it's a cold hammer forged barrel, it's 16 inches long, which is about 405, 410 millimeters off the top of my head. It's got a half inch by 28 thread and it comes with a muzzle brake, but you can put a moderator on it too. I ran it with both, I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. Now, the cold hammer forged barrel looks like it's fully free floated in this massive sort of octagonal forend, but actually it's not. It is actually bolted to the forend at the front here, just above the sling stud, which I'm using to mount a bipod on. Um, if I take that off, you'll see the sling stud. I can't easily show you the fact the barrel is bolted to the forend because it's kind of hidden away, but maybe just on the ceiling camera, you'll see the junction there. In fact, it's joined within and it's bolted on the underside there. Now that does make everything ultimately incredibly stiff, but it's a compound assembly. It's not sort of free floating or even bedded in that way, but it does seem to work quite well. And I would never say though, that this is kind of the ultimate precision accuracy rifle, but it is a great tough rifle for, you know, plinking with, using for targets, using for more fun disciplines where it's more about point, shoot, fire and move, etc especially when you want the fast bolt speed and the fast backup shots let me just put this bipod back on here
Interestingly, although I say I don't really like AR-15s for hunting because the bolt's very, very noisy when it's reciprocating, it's hard to close them quietly and get true performance. This one's actually a bit different because you can actually let this bolt close slowly and it works just fine. You don't need to kind of grip it and rip it like you do on an AR-15. So as long as you operate it smoothly and calmly, maybe just give it a slight forward shove, it's fine. Now, you'll notice in the video when I was using this subsonic ammunition, I did actually have to manually sort of straight pull cycle it every round. They didn't cycle themselves. They're a 32 grain bullet, the subsonic, and they are just not fast enough with enough recoil to make the recoil operated action work smoothly. But it did go to illustrate that if you want to use the rifle in a more quiet, sedate manner, it is possible to do that. The short barrel is only 14 millimeters in diameter and the rifle itself without any scopes or bipods or anything is only 2.8 kilograms, which is about six pound four ounces. So it isn't actually that unwieldy to use. Overall length of the rifle is 880 millimeters or 34.75 inches and fully extended that goes up to 970 millimeters, which is 38 and a quarter inches. You've got six stages of length of pull adjustment, which goes from 315 to 403 millimeters, which is 12 and a half to 15 and three quarter inches. Now that is really long for any rifle, never mind a collapsing stock sort of AR 15 y kind of style thing. And I have to say, that does make it incredibly comfortable to use. You've also got adjustable cheek piece height. Now, one thing you do need to be a little bit careful of is if you're using a rear bag on the underside here and you're just loading the bipod slightly, if you push the rear bag into the lever, you will sort of slide the butt closed a little bit. It's not a huge problem and you get used to it and if you support under the heel here, under the toe here, sorry, it's not a problem. While we are here, the recoil pad on the back is very thin, but it's rubber. There's no recoil to dampen really. That makes sure though it grips into your shoulder because it is rubber. And there are also quick release sling stud anchor points on either side. The grip is supplied, it's rubberized. I don't think it's truly AR-15 compatible, but it is very comfortable and very tactile, and you can get a nice assured hold onto the rifle. The trigger is non-adjustable. It's single stage and it breaks at 1300 grams, which is about 46 ounces. Now you can see it here, there's a bit of creep involved, but it's smooth, you don't feel it's not grinchy, and you can use it quite predictably. But again, it's not an ultimate accuracy precision rifle, so we can forgive it that because it's all about the usability of it. The safety catch on the back there goes through either way, so one side for fire, one side for safe. Cocking the rifle is simply a case of operating the bolt handle there. If you want to lock the bolt back, there's a button in the front of the trigger guard here. Push that up and it locks the bolt open. So if I show you that there, and you'll see me do this a few times throughout the film, it's quite easy to do, you get used to it very quickly. The fore end and receiver is all aluminium. It's hard anodized matte black. It's very tough, including the Picatinny rail on top, which of course makes scope mounting very simple. The back end is a polymer injection molding. And because it's polymer, it doesn't draw the heat out of your skin, doesn't draw the heat out of your cheek. It's very comfortable, slightly stippled finish and tactile, reasonably quiet in use as well. Doesn't make that much noise. Now, going back to the Picatinny rail, if you look at this, <laughs> generally on AR-15 type rifles, you can see there's a reach forward scope mount on here. Now on AR-15s, you've often got a very short Picatinny rail. So the scopes often reach forward slightly, to, the mounts reach forward slightly to position the scope far enough away. So you've got correct tire relief. Now on this one, look at the length of Picatinny rail on that. It's absolutely massive. So it's great for adding any accessories you want to it. The fore end has got threaded holes in it, so you can add accessories to it, but it's not M-lock compatible. And as I said before, there is a stud on the bottom for a bipod.
I used a couple of scopes on this rifle during the review process. This is a primary arms one to eight times scope. Small scope, it's great for point and shoot activities. And you'll see it's got a little chevron reticle in it. There's a couple of aim over marks, but it's definitely more suited to actually point and shoot on fairly large targets. It's not parallax adjustable, but it is illuminated, which does mean that sometimes you'll see if I've used higher magnification at low range or at shorter range, you can't get clear focus with it. But that's a factor of a fixed parallax scope. And when you're down at the lower magnification levels, you don't notice that. I also then switched to an Element HD scope with a ballistic turret on top so I could do a little bit more long range shooting. And I quite enjoyed doing that. In terms of absolute every day, what will this gun do on paper every time? I think, to be totally honest, it's a one and a half to two MOA rifle. So, you know, one and a half to two inch groups, 100 yards, that sort of thing. Um, like I've said, this is the third time I think I've said it. It's not an accuracy and precision rifle. It's a fun plinking rifle and it is an enormous amount of fun. Remington Magnum Rimfire. Forty grain definitely works better. Now in use with a muzzle breaker on the rifle fed the 32 and 40 grain Aguila and Remington ammunition very consistently. I didn't have any single misfeeds or miss ejections. There were no problems with it at all. The subsonic, yes, every time with subsonic, you do need to manually rack the bolt because if you don't rack the bolt, it won't feed the rounds. There just isn't enough recoil. Now, when I came to put the moderator on it, it did suffer a little bit and then only the 40 grain Remington ammunition gave me a 100% reliability rating. But there wasn't a huge amount to choose between them all in terms of accuracy, certainly between the three high velocity rounds, which are running at about 1800, 1820 feet per second and a little bit more. So this will make a rabbit rifle with 300 foot pounds if you want it to. Um, it wouldn't be my primary choice, but I have to say, I did think if I get the time, I might use it for such a task because the Aguila soft point ammunition does look ideal for it. And the Remington is actually a ballistic tip. So who knows if I get the chance, I might give that one a try. CZ are launching the new Scorpion Rimfire soon, which will also be a semi-automatic in 2.2LR. I'm looking forward to getting one of those, but I don't think that diminishes the amount of fun I've had using this, because 2.2WMR is not that regular. You don't get many of them. I've been reviewing rifles for 13 years. It's only the second semi-auto 2.2WMR I've ever had. So I have really enjoyed shooting the gun.
Well, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell so you can keep track of my regular uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.